jump right into it so it says select difficulty level and apparently when you hover over the silhouettes you see what it may be explore difficulty offers a simple survival challenge that allows the players to focus on the narrative fights will be easy and plenty of supplies will be found when traveling across the weight the white wasteland uh -huh. balance challenge requires some tactics plans to ensure your survival standard difficulty most of the content is uh, turn to offer an ideal level of challenge, mercenary, which I guess is hard, which is unbalancing and punishing challenge. For the most determined of players, fights will be punishing for supplies, scares. Alright, so we'll do survivor and we'll go from that. Oh, apparently I'm able to allocate my, my, uh, my points. That's cool. Use this character. So each one takes one point. It's good to know. Oh no, now it's taking more. <laughs> okay, firearms is a must. Hunting is another. All right. Okay, I guess we have to read this and then click on to events of story. It has been two years since you lost your memory after a freak uh, snow slide. Your saviors from that day are now your normal family. Today is the day, just like any other day, you're out hunting in the forest with your companion and a good friend, Jerome. Wake up in the woods surrounded by snow and massive old trees. A cold wind is blowing in your face and your arms and legs are chilled to the bone. Okay. You feel a gentle tap on your shoulder. It's Jerome waking you up. Wake up. A beast took the bait. We sat and smiles at you and whispers, come on. Alright, it seems to be a lot of reading, so I'm not going to read all of it. You feel confused and the white glowing snow disorients, but you manage to get on your feet. The old man looks at your feet and smiles, waiting for your brain to start working again. And then I can add to the narrative. Harry, we don't have all day. Just look at the majestic deer. Today might be our lucky day. You're damn right. Lowered by your bait, the deer moves closer, and a large beast could. Provide for food for families for several days. Let him shoot it. Jerome slowly lasers his bow and prepares the arrow. As you wish, lazy man. Damn, I'm lazy. Hold on. Oh. Jerome steals his aim for a few seconds and then shoots that arrow that pierces through the beast's neck. The deer emits a strange, oh, yeah, strangled cry and falls to the ground. Look at that, jeez. Okay, the map is divided into, into nodes. Click on the nearby node to move towards it. Moving will consume food, and running out of food will quickly lead to death of your whole group. That's beautiful. And you can already see tents of your camp. You follow Jerome and drop the deer to the ground. Oh, we're gonna eat deer for dinner. Jerome smiles and puts his hand on your shoulder. Well, well, well. Suddenly, a Garan appears behind you. You brought back a week's worth of food. Where are the others, Garan? You see Hector coming out of his tent. He doesn't look too well. They are hunting self of here. You know, Irma, she simply can't stand doing nothing. Looking at his face. 
Sick. I'm fine. I'm fine. Hector coughs a couple times before speaking again. It's just a cold. It won't kill me. Well, this deer isn't going to butcher itself. Let's get started and maybe have some time for another run. Leave that to me. I'm stuck here anyways because of my ankle still hurts. All I can do is limp around. Go for another run. Try to get as much as possible. There's a long road ahead. I don't want to hunt every day. Let's stock up on food while we can. Jerome looks at the sun. We have time, so I guess we could go for another one. Uh, I'm ready. Let's go. Just don't fall asleep this time. I'm the old guy. I should be the one to randomly go to sleep. Come on, let's go. You take lead this time. Each snow can have different places in it in which you can scavenge food or hunt for food. Okay. To hunt, click on the forest icons. Hunting will provide food and resources like pelts. Okay. Always pay attention to the danger bar. The most dangerous is a place with a higher chance to trigger negative events. Short. The forum seems relatively open and easy to explore for hunting, so you should be oops, simply and safe. Success. After taking your time and carefully exploring the woods, you're able, you regroup in the open area and gather what you have found. You take all. You're walking and looking around, hoping to see some movement. Then Jerome puts his hand on your shoulder and begins to speak. It's getting late. We should go back. If Hector wants to stock up on food so much, it's because we're going to be traveling at least for a week. And we don't want to be tired tomorrow. We might have to walk for the entire day. You're right. Let's see if the others found something. Hector is not the only one getting tired of stopping every two days to hunting for food. Finally, I need some rest. Take a look around the camp. Your companions are talking and talking. Taking care of dinner. Looks like everyone has made it back safely. Warren approaches you, so how did it go? Come near the fire. Dinner is almost ready. You will need it for tomorrow. Hector seems eager to move out as soon as possible in the morning. You take your seat near the fire, exchanging greetings with the others. Irma, Gron's wife, starts uh, giving out the plates of cooked meat to the group. Let's all be thankful to our hunters for the meat we are about to eat. Hector calls after speaking. Will you tell us where we're headed? Not far from here tomorrow, we will go to a nearby town for scavenging. I hope to find something useful for our upcoming travels there. You know what I mean? Where are we going to end up in the long run? Where will we spend the winter? We will travel south far from any common route. We must get away from the plains. Hector coughs again. The plains are becoming dangerous and I'm not talking about all the bandit activity. There are rumors of red horsemen prowling the area and increasingly growing in numbers. What does it mean? I'm tired of traveling without a purpose. We've always stayed in the plains. Why should we travel to an unknown lands? Don't worry, it's all snow and cold, just like here. You won't be missing much. I don't care what we do. If the plants have become that dangerous, then we should probably leave. I won't put my children at risk without reason, and traveling away from uh, any known route is a huge risk, especially when the only thing we know is what is going south. Hmm... There's no need to worry about that. We've already been south of here. Jerome looks at you, which you should remember since that's where I was, what I found you. Exactly, it would be a hard winter if we just spend it walking on the mantle. I don't want to do that. I have two children. Hector's becoming annoyed. I already said that the planes are becoming dangerous. 
you don't want a Red Horseman clan to attack us and enslave the survivors, do you? It's better to walk on the mantle for the entire winter than face them. The sooner we run, the safer it will be. It's only a possibility staying in the plains means certain death. That's why we're taking such a risk because it's a possible death is always better than a certain one. It's simply random walking, <laughs> walk around and hope that everything will be end up just fine. You can barely breathe right now. We can't rely on luck to survive. We need a plan. Now Hector is just becoming angry. We're not walking around without a purpose. We're running away from certain death. I'm sorry if I'm unable to foresee the future. But we have more of a chance to survive without shelter for the winter than, f than by finding one in the plains just to be attacked by the horsemen. <laughs> Do you think I'm unable to see the risk we're running into? Do you actually think I'm an idiot? We have no a violent cough. Fitch chokes out Hector's words. Take it easy, pal. We need you alive despite what Irma says. Hector waits a moment before speaking again. We're going south because I think it's our best chance of survival. End of discussion. Nothing of importance happens for the rest of the evening. You eventually go to bed and to prepare yourself for the next day. Damn, that was like instant. <laughs> you wake up in the morning hearing voices coming from outside. Hector and the others are preparing the plan for the day. Okay, people, we are now spread out in pairs and search for anything useful in small towns. Over there, especially on the lookout for any tools. Irma, you stay with the children and guard our stuff. If anything happens, scream. I'll go with Jerome Garand. You go with Mark. Hector turns to you. And you'll go with... Demetra. I guess that's how you pronounce the name. I hope it won't be a waste of time. Garand puts on his backpack. I'm tired of seeing empty buildings. Tools and anything you can sell or use. I won't complain if you bring back an assault rifle. All right, let's go. The merchant nods at you. I'll follow your lead. Scavenging is like hunting, but it's uh, initiated by clicking on the building icon. Scavenging is the best way to get items and crafting resources. Always pay attention to the danger bar. Yeah. Traveling through the white wasteland, you see an old farm, and eventually, even if it was catching plenty of times already, perhaps there's little is missing something of worth. Okay. Success. Your group spreads across the farm building and starts searching for loot, even though the place has already been ransacked. You nevertheless find a few handy items. It's close to nightfall. We should head back to camp. The mature stops. Her tracks. I'm getting shivers all over. It's not from the cold. There's something dark out there waiting for us to close our eyes. And it may take us by surprise. What do you mean? Something dreadful ahead of us, expecting to drop our guard, waiting for the right moment to strike. We'll stay vigilant. I just hope that you keep your eyes open enough to face whatever awaits us. We better move while there's still sunlight. You reach the camp after a few hours, Grown spots you from a distance, raises his hands for greeting. You can see the sadness on his face. What's going on? It's not easy to say, but Grown takes a deep breath. Hector is badly sick. He passes out for a few hours ago. He's in his tent, barely able to breathe. The situation is desperate. We have no medicine for this kind of sickness. He's pretty far gone. You see Jerome coming out from Hector's tent and his face painted with suffering. As far as you know, he and Hector had been good friends for a long time. People gather around Hector's tents in silent. silence. Mark finally asks the question on everyone's mind. How is he? In that same moment, Irma comes out of the tent. Jerome sighs, it's over. There was nothing we can do. Uh, oh my god, why didn't he say anything about his health? He did! the hell are you saying he did it you know Hector he wanted to get away from the planes and he didn't want anything to stop us Ron stays silent for a minute then he raises his head and speaks again I will prepare the body for the funeral you should go ahead and take some rest 
People scatter around while Jamal uh, comes near you and sighs again. The two are now alone. I met Hector more than 20 years ago, and yet he said nothing. Not to anyone, not to me. He just died and left the best behind him. Tomorrow we'll need to vote for a new leader, and that's going to be total chaos. Everyone will bicker, and I bet Irma will go crazy again and threaten people while screaming like a lunatic. I'm really sorry for the loss. Thank you. But I've seen more friends die in my time. I'm lucky to be old, but hopefully I won't have to attend to another friend's funeral. I need to be alone. Call me when Groans is finished with uh, uh, Kyrie. Groan walks away and sits down outside the camp. After some time passes, you call by. I can't even pronounce his name properly. The Metro. Everything is ready for the funeral. Everyone gathers around the big stack of wood. After making sure that all this present, Ron throws a lit torch in the Kyrie, slowly settling uh, it ablaze, shrouding Hector's body in a dance of life. Jerome says nothing, but the sadness on his face is unmistakable. Uh, he just stands in front of the Kyrie and stays there even after everyone else is gone. You are tired, so you proceed to your tent hoping to get a decent night's sleep. But a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night. You see a strange light through the fabric of the tent and hear noises of cold stomping the ground. And that also sounds of gunfire. You are under attack. During fights, you have to combine different actions into abilities. Your action pool is determined by the equipment and skills of your party. Every turn, you draw 12 actions from your pool. Click actions to select and combine them. In the lower area, you will see if the current combination can trigger an ability. Actions have three different tier levels, bronze, silver, and gold. The higher the tier, the more powerful the ability effect. To win a fight, bring your opponent's HP to zero. No shit. Losing morale won't lead to a direct defeat, but more morale a party loses, the less damage it will deal. Raising morale, on the other hand, will improve damage being dealt. Penalty actions cannot be, uh... Yeah, combined. Other actions, so the more penalties you have in your deck, let's use for actions. Items can be consumed once per turn, so in addition to your current pool, bullets are also used with standard abilities involving the use of firearms. Select your weapon. Wow, 900 to our 85. I guess that's all I'm able to pick. Get our shit pushed in. Yeah, we're dead. Like, that's, that's like instant game. You feel weak and aching. You try to crawl down on the ground, but each of your moves causes your body to explode in pain. You try to stay awake, but soon your willpower will weaken and pass out. After that, there's only darkness. You don't know how long you'll stay unconscious. Strange dreams creep into your dormant mind. Dreams of a different place, of a different time. You see a shiny tower rising towards the sky. A piece of technology you've never seen in the white wasteland. Technology belonging to an ancient broken world 
Hey, wake up, are you okay? You hear Jerome's voice, you finally realize that you're dreaming, and the sudden realization brings you back to the waking world. Situation is pretty messed up, just take a look around. Look around in the morning, Samba blinds you at first, but then you're able to see that your mates are sitting on the ground tied up. You're not the only prisoners, as the other people here seem to share your situation. Armed bandits are guarding the area. You can see many people, many tents scattered around, so it's difficult to assess how many are there. Running away from them won't be easy. They have guns and everything else. They need to keep us in our place. You'll never escape. We tried, but there's too many of them. And their horse, they have horses and guns. <sighs> Excuse me. If they want us alive, I feel we'll also be slow. Precisely. We all know how slaves are treated like animals. I won't be beaten again just because of one of us wants to do something stupid. They'll beat all of us, Joseph. But what should we do? Just wait here and be sold as slaves. Long story short, we tried to run away during the night. They found us and <laughs> beat the shit out of us at <laughs> the <End of> story. <laughs> Unless if you have a freaking brilliant idea, I prefer not to be beaten again. Screw you, I'd rather die than be a slave. We're leaving. I don't know how, but we're leaving. The stranger smiles slightly. Sure, I'm really curious to see what you'll do. A bandit approaches you and starts shouting, Shut the fuck up, all of you. We're moving now. Prepare yourselves. It's going to be a long walk. You know, all the other prisoners start walking. With your hands tied on the bed. Along the bandit's caravan, you're constantly under watch and unable to find a way to break free. Day after day, you become uh, resigned to your fate. The bandits are watching you all the time and they don't even want to allow talking about yourselves. You barely get to know the ones you shared the ordeal. Uh, Carlos and April are a couple and they were in the same group as Joseph when they got attacked and kidnapped. There's a young girl, Eva. She seems sad and never speaks. The only thing that you're able to discover is that the bandits killed her family. But finally, after walking for several days through the White Plains, something happens. The bad thing is that it doesn't look like... It doesn't look something good, not at all. Yo, what the crap? You saw... You saw three people... Um, peacefully approaching the bandits. They don't look like a common uh, survivors, even if the bandits who ass assaulted you, despite their abundant resources, are not that well equipped. Polished and shiny weapons, high tech equipment, all the bandits look at these three people with reverence and awe. Never seen anything like this in the White Wasteland. One of the max soldiers speaks up in a feminine voice. Proceed with the test and let's move on. We have no time to waste. I'm sure they are good. Some of the prisoners are young and healthy. They'll be perfect for your needs. The woman slowly turns her face to yeah, face the bandits and stands. Still for a couple of seconds in intimidating silence. We'll see. They approach you and the other prisoners uh, and start using medical equipment to take some of your blood. They take a sample from each of you. They walk away after a few minutes. They come back again. The mysterious woman looks at Garan, Irma, and then nods at her two companions. We'll take those two and their children. They're the only ones we're interested in. Do what you want with the others. We have no use for them. They walk away, taking Goran and Irma and the children with them. Jerome tries to stand up on his feet and protest, but then he is kicked in the stomach and falls to the ground. The mysterious strangers leave with your companions in tow. While they disappear into the mist, the bandits order you to get on your feet and start walking. Jesus Christ, there's so much story to this. So you're walking just like any other day with armed guards all around you. But then you hear some kind of shout out, you turn to see what's happening. At least 
30 horsemen are charging the bandits quickly descending from the top of a small hill they are wearing red these are the red horsemen raiders and pillagers the entire region the bandits start shooting them but the horsemen rapid you have rapidly reach your position and engage your captors in close combat jerome lets out a shout let's go now and he breaks into a sprint you and the other prisoners attempt to escape while the bandits are too busy worrying about their own lives as you keep running away from your captors you hear the sound of bullets whizzing by you one of those bullets hits joseph in the chest and he falls to the ground april stops running and kneels by her companion's body joseph joseph please stand up Carlos turns around and starts yelling at his wife. Joseph is dead. Run. You're still being shot at, but the bullets pierce the snow around you without hitting anyone. You're too far away to be an easy target. You see the uh, entrance of a tunnel ahead of you, and your group runs towards it. Your captors are now far behind, still busy fighting the horsemen. Take a last look behind you, you see no one coming after you. The tunnel is quite long, but after a few minutes, you finally see the light and feel the cold wind coming from outside. You're now free to travel across the plains and explore the world. Hold the right mouse button to drag and move the camera on the map. Use the buttons near the character's avatars to talk to your companions or change their equipment. You can also heal them if they're injured. Healing the character causes a single unit of medicine. They're more wounded. The uh, more wounded your companions are, the less health points you have during the fights. It's very important to equip your companions. Okay. Wow. Okay, so. There's a crap ton of reading. Like a crap ton of reading. There's no voices for the actors, uh, or the characters rather, in the game. <laughs> Which is kind of, again, like a letdown for something like this and then on top of that you have to like engage in a such manner to where like you you make in, in you know decisions which is fine because that reminds me of like you know certain games like uh, Star Wars um, the Old Republic uh, you have I believe Fallout you have Mass Effect you know some of the games that people are more uh, fond of. You just get like a lot of story here. This is this is game will definitely give you a ton of story. Like I said, I'm kind of like burnt out from reading, like out loud. Of reading here. So, if you're into reading and enjoying a story, this might be something of your liking. But again, it's a point and click game really nothing more the combat is not too uh in depth i guess you can say because you're you're based on a um like abilities that your character may have and you have to mix them which is somewhat okay and interesting and when you mix them you may gain like an unlocked ability that you can use during that time of combat and it's a turn base so with that being said, it's like, you know, you may have an advantage depending on what weapons you have, how much item and resources you have. But 
But yeah, this this game is definitely a lot. Like a lot of reading. Look at his face. Okay, I got a gun, some rope, I got a crowbar, got more healing items, got some hatchet, more guns. Alright, so it's looking... I really wish there was some voices so it would be easier to like What happened to my guns, man? All that shit that I just found? Like, what the crap? It's all I can do is sit here and hold that. <laughs> but again, this, this game is very simple. There's nothing too technical about it. it you know what it reminds me of? Um, if anyone has played like Oregon Trail way back in the day, like I played Oregon Trail on the Mac, so it was like some time ago. Like wow, I was like probably like in the third, third, fourth grade by then. Very long time ago. But if you if you like something like that where you're like pointing and clicking, going to different areas, scavenging for items and you know, tools, weapons and stuff like that, and, you know, and enjoying a a somewhat crazy story by all means I'm just gonna let it end because apparently I don't have a gun and I died apparently because I had no gun but that is icy frostbite edition which I have been playing it on Steam and uh, again I like to give a shout out to reviewfix.com your one stop for music, game, film, comics, and pro wrestling news and reviews. Please give them a like on Facebook, uh, follow on Twitter, uh, sub on YouTube, and visit their site, Bookmark it, guys. They're so good. And they was able to have me bring this content to you. And there'll be other various content in the future with me contributing towards that website. So that will be it for IC Frostbite Edition. My name is Mugen Katsuki, and we'll see you on the next gameplay video.